We are in a time where the new species of believers will be revealed. They are the ones that tap into the seeds of power that is available through the all-powerful, omnipotent God, whose power we are partakers of. I need you to look in the mirror and see that you are a part of the new species of believers and understand that the power of God is working through you by way of the Holy Spirit living in you. Through His power, you will fulfill purpose, maximize your potential, and truly become a light in this world. As God enables you, you will lean into the process of empowerment. This process builds character. It opens the eyes of your understanding, and it's going to help you to realize the value that you bring to this world. You are needed, and you are necessary, but you don't have to do it in your might. It is going to be done through the power of the Holy Spirit living in you right now. So let's step into who God has created you to be and show up powerfully. Welcome to our first installment of our six-part series. I want to jump right into our text, which is taken from Luke chapter 24, verse 49 to 53. I send the promise of the Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. And they worshiped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy and were continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Acts chapter 1, verse 8 to 9. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. And when he had spoken these things while they beheld he, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with the other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let's pray. Our Father and our God, I pray that you would think through my mind, speak through my lips. Let there be none of me, all of you. Give us understanding, comprehension, and the capacity to, to not only receive the principles and the concepts that are given, but actually to activate them in our lives. So indeed, we will operate with power from on high. In Jesus' name, amen. I believe that in this generation, we're going to be witnessing a new species of believers that is going to rise up. These believers are going to rise up with what I call kingdom power. I believe that in this season, we're going to have wonders without numbers. We're going to have um, odd defying exploits and, and, and that defy explanation. We're going to have this, uh, what I call miracles on demand. God is also giving, going to give us bounce back power. He's going to give us unprecedented opportunities and success that will actually defy human understanding and human comprehension. And it's gonna be because we are not only going to acknowledge this supernatural power that is made available to every believer, we are going to exercise it. We're going to engage it and we're gonna exercise it. In our text, Jesus promised to give his disciples power from on high. And I call this high voltage power. And when I talk of power being high voltage, I'm actually talking about a supernatural power from a supernatural source that gives us supernatural abilities to operate from the realm of the supernatural beyond the threshold of what 
is expected or required for normal day-to-day -day operations. In other words, we're going into another realm of quantum power. Now, we all know that we are living in the new normal, but there's nothing new about or normal about the new, so that becomes an oxymoron. I think what uh, will be new is that the believers will be living in a new supernatural realm in the days to come. In other words, there's going to be no more low voltage living. When we talk about low voltage, we're talking about in the natural, um, the type of power that's needed just for curling iron or microwave, something like that. But then you go to the medium voltage and that's where you light up large industrial complexes. And then high voltage is what a country would need. It's a extra high voltage of power ultra voltage. And this is where um, literally you go into the scientific um, specialized instrumentalities or these new technologies that come with this warning. And usually the warning says something like this, that it's explosive hazards that can ignite atmospheres um, and can cause these spontaneous explosion, explosive eruptions should um, it come into contact with a, with a catalyst. So when we talk about high voltage, um, it's enough power to light or ignite an environment or an atmosphere. And this is what you will read about in the book of Acts chapter two, verses one to four, where it records this incident that expresses and demonstrates high voltage power, where there was this spontaneous explosion that erupted. The Bible said it was on the day of Pentecost, when that Pentecost had fully come, where they were in an environment where they were worshiping God, they were praising God, and there was high anticipation, high expectation, high faith that what God had promised he was going to fulfill. They didn't know when it was going to happen. All they know is that God had promised it so that it was going to happen. And I believe we are going to live in realms of the supernatural because believers are going to be uh, releasing their faith at, at, at another level where they or we will begin to say, we don't know when it's going to happen, but we know something is going to happen. And I believe that because I sense it in my spirit that something is about to happen. I am going to begin to decree and declare over your family, over your business, that something is going to happen. It's going to happen for you that's going to change your economic state, your financial state, the your company. I believe that. And it's going to happen um, outside of human power and human strength. The Bible said that when they were in this place and they were all believing and they reached this place of unity, the Bible said how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in a unity. And then the scripture says, for there the Lord commendeth his blessing. And when we talk about God commending his blessings upon something or someone, it means that you cannot stop God from doing what he wants to do. You will become unstoppable. His blessings will become unstoppable. They will not only be unstoppable, they will be spontaneous. People are going to ask, well, what happened? How did this happen? And all you know, you're going to have the testimony, hashtag God did it. That's the beginning of the story. That's the ending of the story. Only God could have done that. The Bible said there was this spontaneous eruption. Suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them clo clothing tongues like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. In other words, this spontaneous eruption of power blessed everyone that was in the room, everyone that was attached to this movement. And I decree everything that is attached to you, everybody that is attached to you is going to be impacted by a supernatural visitation of God. Your son, your daughter, your business, your country, your government will experience a supernatural visitation that's going to actually resurface the terrain of their destiny. I believe 
believe that when you have that spontaneous eruption of supernatural power, destinies are changed instance, instantly. I want you to get ready because we have entered into a new season of spontaneous explosions and eruptions. Something is about to happen. Something is about to explode. And this is why the gospel is preached. The gospel is not just a message for religious folks. The gospel is a message of empowerment. And if we can just get that right, you don't have to be religious for you to experience the power of God. In fact, religion is man's attempt to explain who God is. And that's just a mere attempt to do the explanation. But God works outside of science and he works outside of religion. And this is why the God that we serve is supernatural. And the message that we preach is supernatural. There's nothing natural about it. You may understand what I'm saying in the natural, but the words that I speak, they are power and they are life. It's the words that Jesus spoke that became the gospel. And the gospel is the power of God uh, being, being released in word form. The, 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 the gospel is the message of empowerment. It is a message that has the power to ignite a new species of humans, ones who live for God, ones who have um, access to, to the supernatural, and ones that have um, an understanding of God's original plan and purpose for humanity, and ones who actually become lights in this world, city that is set on the hill, individuals that raise the standard of performance, raise the bar morally and ethically, who not only preaches it, but they live it. They become, they become um, undisputed um, a proof that there is a living God because their lights are shining so brightly that men do see their good works and then they are that man glorify God, which is in heaven. And First uh, Thessalonians 1 and 5 sa says, for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power in the Holy Ghost. And so we know that the presence of God in our lives, the power of God in our lives is the working of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. The gospel is our kingdom's national treasure, and this power is in you. 2 Corinthians 4, 7 to 8 says, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. How could you be troubled? and not distress? How could you be perplexed and not despair? In other words, your emotions no longer have the ability to control your life. You are living inside out. There are reasons why you should break down, but instead of breaking down, you break through because of this supernatural power that is living on the inside of you. This is the species of believers that will live in this earth realm supernaturally. These are individuals who will defy the odds. These are going to be the Christian disruptors. These are going to be the Christian influencers. These are going to be the Christian history makers. These are going to be the Christian agents of change because they are no longer going to be reliant on uh, the natural. Um, they are going to tap into the supernatural and they're going to live in the realm of the kingdom, which is a realm of power. First Corinthians 4 and 20 says, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. This is going to be your most powerful season ever. In fact, for the rest of your life, it is going to be accentuated by power. You are going to show up and people are going to talk about how powerful you really are. You are going to speak and people are going to talk about how powerful your message is, how powerful your music is, how powerful
powerful your songs are. You are going to be recognized as powerful. You're going to be one of the most powerful influencers in your industry because this power that is on the inside of you is given to you in seed form. And the more you acknowledge it, the more you exercise it, the more powerful you will become. You are not waiting for someone to empower you when you recognize that it is the message of the kingdom that brings that power. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You are God's most powerful expression um, of himself in this earth realm. And you are going to be one of the most powerful individuals in your country, in your community, even in your ministry, even in your industry. You are going to find out and you are going to testify. For this is a season where God is revealing to us how powerful we really are. If you would turn with me to the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 15 to 19. It says, Wherefore I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus, Jesus and love unto all the saints. Cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and in the knowledge of him. That means that when we come to wisdom, if wisdom is a spirit, Ignorance is a spirit as well. And therefore, I decree and declare you will not be ignorant in this season. Ignorance simply means that you are living in darkness and the wool has been pulled over your eyes. It's like walking around spiritually blind. But I'm decreeing and declaring the same thing that... um, Paul spoke to the Ephesus church. I'm speaking that you will have an eye opening experience. He said in verse number eight, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the, of the glory of his inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards outward who believe according to the working of his mighty power. In other words, you being in the kingdom makes you a powerful individual. Now I want to talk to you about nine Greek words for power and and seven of which is in this text from out of Ephesians chapter one, verse 15 to 19. There is the word for power called dunamis and dunamis is kinetic energy. I want to talk to you about that soon. It's kinetic energy energy. And this is like dynamite, which is kinetic energy, but also human beings can have kinetic energy as well. Ephesians 1, 19 to 21. Then there's the word vigor um, that, that is coming from the Greek word kratos. So the first word is dunamis, which is kinetic energy. The second one is kratos. The third one is curiatatis, that's K-U-R-I-O-T-A-T-E-S, Curiotetis. The fourth one is Iscus. The, the, the fifth one is Anergon. The sixth one is Exusia. The seventh one is RK. The eighth one is Didomai. The ninth, ninth one is Megliotis. Megliotis. And um, I want to go through each one of these and I repeat Ephesians 1, uh, chapter 1, verses 15, and I go straight through to chapter 20 to show you that this is a powerful text that speaks about the power of God that is made available to you or operating in you right now. That means you are powerful beyond human comprehension. It's just that you may not have realized it, you may not have acknowledged it, and you may not have exercised it. But just because you don't see yourself as powerful doesn't mean that you are not powerful. Power is given in seed form. Think about a seed. A seed has in it um, it, it this DNA, a divinely um, engineered facility or, or innate power that once it's placed in the right environment, it activates what is innate and it becomes automatic. 
In other words, a lot of us are not as powerful as we possibly can be. It is because we're not in the right environment. But I understand that even if the environment is not conducive for you to develop this power that is on the inside of you so that you can show up powerfully every day, you can recalibrate the environment and the climate that you are living in through prayer, through the power of the spoken word, through faith, through your belief, through your expectations, you can recalibrate the environment to support your power, to support your presence, to support your potential, to support your gifts and your talents. That power is in your hand. Once you realize that you are not a victim of circumstances, that when you show up, even right down to the molecular structure of the air that is surrounding you and the oxygen that is surrounding you. The molecular structure of your environment can shift the moment and does shift the moment you show up. So going back to our passage in Ephesians chapter one, verse 15 to 21, the Bible says, wherefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and love unto all the saints, cease not to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the father of glory may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of his glory in the inheritance of the saints. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power? That word power is dunamis. That's that first word that we introduce you to, the first word called power. And that is kinetic energy. It, it, kinetic energy, when it comes to a human being, is what people feel when a person walks in the room. You know, that you, you, you feel their power you know this is someone important. This is someone powerful. You could just feel it. That's that power. And God says that you, you will have an understanding of how powerful you are so that when you walk in the room, people can feel that kinetic energy. That's the power that um, uh, wealthy people have. It's the power of persuasion that is irresistible. It's, it's, it's what happens when powerful people walk in the room, all heads turn. And I'm decreeing and declaring that you will exercise that power. This is the prayer that, that, that uh, Paul prays for the church. He's praying for you and I. What if you could embody the energy of this one prayer that Paul prayed. Can you imagine how you would feel when you walk in a room having people respect you and honor you and uh, being a head turner all to the glory of God? In other words, when you walk in this power, it's dunamis, this kinetic energy that is flowing from you. Can you imagine what you will achieve and what you will accomplish and what you will do when you no longer suffer from insecurity and you have an insecurity complex, this dunamis increases um, your, your um, confidence, your level of confidence. And we're going to talk about this momentarily because I'm going to really begin to excavate this, the, 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 the whole idea of power. You are powerful beyond belief. Now, the second um, part of this or the second word comes into the comes from the next part of this um, text. It says that you would know what is the greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working. That's energon, energon. That's effectiveness. That means that, you know, you're, you're, you're exercising energy and you're having effect. Have you ever done something and then you, you felt like you had wasted your time because you didn't get the results that you wanted? That means that you were non-effective. But in this day, I'm decreeing and declaring that you will begin to exercise the power that is already in you. It is is the power energon for you to be effective. It, it, it's, it's, it's the energy that brings about effectiveness. There are so many people that do things and it falls flat. 
In other words, you'll have success in everything that you do. Your day of falling flat on your face after doing something is over. Your days of being non-effective is over. Why? Because God is going to give you the understanding of the working of his might. That word might is kratos. It means vigorous. And it means that you are approaching things with vim and with vigor. And you know how sometimes you go through your day and you feel just drained. In other words, you will have experiences, experiences like Samson. You are going to have this supernatural power and people are going to wonder where did this power come from? This is what happened with Jesus after 40 days of fasting in the wilderness and he was tempted of the enemy and he came out and he came out with power. The Holy Ghost was upon him. The anointing was, was rich and resident in his life and he walks in and he opens the Bible and he, and he, he reads with so much power, so much might, so much vigor. They were like, where'd you get that power from? Isn't this the son of the carpenter? How did you get so powerful. And this is that word, the third word um, that we gave to you, which is translated vigor, might. It's kratos. And then the power, the Bible said, according to the mighty power, that's force, that's iskos, which he wrought, that's energod, that's effectively in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his, at his right hand, even uh, in heavenly places, above all principalities. That's RK. That, that's a word for power. It means the chain of authority. It means someone has authority, but there's a chain. Someone that is at, is at a higher level has more authority than the one at the lower level, but the one at the lower level has authority, but not as much as the one at the higher level. So when we talk about principality, RK is a chain of authority and power that's exousia. Now everyone knows the word exousia and it's translated authority, which is different from the other power words and might, which is dunamis. That's the kinetic energy and dominion that is curiotatus or rulership and every name that is named, not only in the world, but in which to come. And so when we see the whole idea, idea of power. Power in the English language is, it, it loses, it, it's, um, we lose the dynamics of the word power because there are many Greek words for power and they all have different uh, um, translations. They all mean something different. So the nine Greek words for power is dunamis, that's kinetic energy, kratos, it's vigor, curiatos, it's rulership and dominion, iskos is force, anergon is effectiveness, exousia is authority, RK is like this chain of authority, a magistrate, didomai is ability, and you can find didomai in Revelation 13, 14, and 15, and megaliatas, megaliatas, and that's magnificence, and that's mighty power, and you can find a reference of that in Luke 9, 43. This is going to be one of your most powerful year. We are talking about God bringing you into new realms of power and not just uh, power that we understand, but supernatural power. God is going to bring you into realms of supernatural power, or high voltage power, where God is going to take you from a powerless state to a more powerful state. You are going to see that things that really rock your world last year will not have any effect on you this year because God has given you power. Now, all power is given in seed form. First Peter 1, 2 to 4 says, grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, according as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has been called that has called us from glory uh, us to glory and virtue where whereby we are given um, exceeding great and precious promises but but that by these things we should part be partakers of the divine nature having escaped the corruption that is 
in, in the world through lust. Now we know that God is omnipotent. He's the all powerful one. And the Bible says that we are partakers of the divine nature. And a part of the nature of God is his power. Unfortunately, the vast majority of us, while we're endeavoring to accomplish great things, and many of us have accomplished a lot of great things and noteworthy things, a lot of us still remain dissatisfied with this sense of non-accomplishment. We're frustrated, and there's this gnawing feeling that there's something missing on the inside, like there's this missing piece that something within us remains undone, unfulfilled. And this is as a result of the fact that we have not maximized our potential. In other words, you've done things, but there's still this gnawing feeling that there are yet things to be done. I was talking to a friend of mine and he, he said he had done so much thing, he's in his 80s, and he had done so many things in his life, but yet he's not satisfied. And I understand Understood because I understood that he was simply saying he had not maximized his potential. And one of the things that he didn't want to do was to take gifts and talents and anything that God had placed in him he, it, that, that was yet unexpressed or yet undone or yet unfulfilled. He didn't want to take that to the grave with him. And I'm decreeing and declaring in this season, you are going to live such a powerful life that you are not going to to take any gift, any talent, any song, any business to the grave, any book to the grave with you. You are going to die empty. You are going to be a grave robber in this season. You are going to rob the grave of all the wealth, all the books, all the talents. You are not going to die full. You're going to die empty. Um, one of the things that uh, the late Miles Monroe said, he said that the graveyard is the wealthiest place in the world simply because people have died with unexpressed, unexpressed gifts and talents and books that never had been written and paintings that had never been painting. And so he considered the graveyard the wealthiest place in the world. But I decree and declare you are not going to make the graveyard even wealthier and richer. You are going to die empty. And you're going to do that when you recognize how powerful you are. You are going to recognize the value that you are bringing to the earth. This is why the message of the kingdom is important. It is a message of empowerment. It gives you the ability to die empty. It gives you the ability to live above the limits of this world, above prevailing culture, above the status quo. You are going to defy odds. When we talk about empowerment, and it's important for me to give you a definition, a working definition. And this is my definition of empowerment. Empowerment is not about someone giving you something that you don't have. It means that, that God brings someone in your life and that person becomes a catalyst for you. I remember, um, riding the bus to school or riding the bus to work. And there was this weird lady that used to, um, ride my same bus and she was a Christian, but she was so different from most of us that was riding the bus because most of us was not Christian. And she would walk on the bus and she had this presence. And we're going to talk about that power. Remember I talked about the kinetic energy when someone walks in the room, how the atmosphere changes. When she would walk on the bus, people would have this holy hush and she would walk through and we were quiet and nobody knew why because she smiled. She was a nice lady, but she was different and we didn't know what was different about her, but we discovered that that lady was a Christian but she was also a prophet. She was also a very holy woman. And it changed the atmosphere on a, a bus that was not a Christian bus. It was just a, a regular bus that everybody rode. And she would walk in 
and that this atmosphere was changed. And I'm just thinking about this as I'm talking about power. And one day after years of riding with this woman, she turned with me and she said, young lady, God is going to use you. Well, then that confirmed to me that this woman is really weird and something is wrong with this woman because I didn't understand. I didn't understand anything about the prophetic. I didn't understand anything that was um, outside of my Anglican upbringing, Anglican and Methodist upbringing and Salvation Army upbringing. I didn't understand anything about this Pentecostalism. I didn't understand anything about that. But um, I started avoiding her because she frightened me. And years later, I understood that th this woman was anointed by God and God had spoken to her about me. And some of the things that she said actually came to pass. And it was about maybe a couple of years later that I gave my heart to the Lord and the eyes of my understanding actually was enlightened. It means that even though she was speaking to me, I was spiritually blind. It was like pouring water on a duck's back at that particular time. So when you're sp spiritually blind, it's very difficult for you to see what people are saying. To see means to understand, that the eyes of your understanding. And so as long as you're blind, a, a spiritual person, a Christian, a prophet could speak to you, but it's like water on duck's back because you're spiritually blind. But the moment your, the eyes of your understanding are enlightened, all of a sudden those concepts will begin to make sense to you. And so as I'm speaking, some of these concepts may be new to you and you're probably saying, well, what is she actually saying? but I want you to listen to the very end and follow this teaching to the very end because you are going to have an eye-opening experience and then you're going to begin to understand what this message of empowerment is all about. But when the gospel is preached, it's a message of empowerment. And empowerment is the process by which an individual or a group of individuals are, are assisted, equipped, and strengthened in order for them to discover and identify their potential, in order for them to identify their capabilities, in order to um, access resources, whether the resources are natural, whether they're financial, whether they're spiritual. This person is able to access the resources while at the same time, they're in, uh, unable to identify, they're able to exploit, they're able to leverage opportunities. There's a lot of opportunities that are around us, but people feel powerless. But when the message of the gospel is preached, it takes you from being powerless to powerful. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. And this, this happens to empowerment is this process. So when you're empowered, it doesn't mean that today when you get this message and you have an understanding, all of a sudden you're going to have supernatural strength. You're going to grow into, into the strength. It's like building muscles. You have the potential that is there, but with resistance and wait, your muscles can become bigger and stronger. And a lot of times we don't understand what we are confronted with, which, which seems like it's, it, it's hard to overcome. It seems like everything is in our way, in our path. It is because God is putting pressure and weight on you to build the spiritual muscles that you're going to need when he elevates you to a place of authority. There's the scripture that says, to whom much is given, much is required. And a lot of times when God elevates elevates us into positions of authority and positions of power, we have great resistance and we need to build spiritual muscles and moral muscle, muscles and ethical muscles. A lot of times people want to be in positions of power, but I'm telling you, heavy is the head that wears the crown. When you get to that level of power and authority, you haven't seen spiritual warfare yet. It comes to you from every angle. You could see it even with world leaders, the kind of stress that they're under. They go into office with black hair, they come out with white hair, and they come out in four years grade because of the type of 
pressure that they're under. And when greatness is on you, you come under pressure. Here we are introduced in the Bible story about Jesus. And when he was being processed to become the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, he was in the Garden of Eden. He was praying. The Bible said that he was sweating. Blood, drops of blood was sweating. He was, he was under so much stress and pressure that it broke blood vessels. Uh, listen to me carefully. When God empowers you, you will not break under the pressure of success. You will not crumble under the pressure of greatness. Why? Because when you are at a lower state, you allow God to build those muscles so that you can be sustained at the level of greatness. Now, when you're empowered, you're empowered in order to maximize your own strength, your own potential, to be able to hone your skills and, and, and abilities to become self-sufficient, to think at a higher or more advanced level for the fulfillment of a, of a vision, a goal, a dream, or an objective. And I was thinking about Joseph as God was, was elevating him into one of the highest positions, not just in Egypt, because before Egypt was a superpower, before, before Joseph shows up, Egypt was just a part of Mesopotamia, just a little village within Mesopotamia, but God uh, 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 processed David in his home with great rejection in the workplace, in a, in a toxic environment. He was thrown into prison. And all of this was a part of the empowerment process. Listen to me carefully. Nothing that you go through is going to be wasted. God has already seen somewhere in your future where you need this kind of experience in order to build the mental toughness, in order to build the moral toughness, in order to build the spiritual muscle that you need in the future to sustain you. And those of you that have the luxury and the opportunity to work with someone that puts pressure on you, you need to praise God. And it has nothing to do with your now, it has to do with your next. And in this season, you're gonna find out that there's gonna be a series of um, experiences that you will go through, a series of circumstances, some of which would seem as if it it's senseless, but it's the empowerment process. God said, I give you power, but there is the empowerment process that he's going to take you through. Ultimately, it's going to lead you to wealth, to fulfillment, to success, and prosperity. That is the end game. The end game is for you to be successful. And this is what empowerment is all about. It's about you being able to claim your rights. You have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. You have the right to success, the right to prosperity. This is your right. And not only your right, also the empowerment process is for you to live and take responsibility. And then you use all the resources to make this world a better place. So when we're talking about empowerment, we are not talking about a process that is just selfish. It's a process that will build you up so that you operate at the highest level of your potential so that indeed you can be a light in this world. You could be a city set on this hill. You can be an agent of change. You can make this world a better place. You can extend the kingdom of God. The kingdom of heaven will find full expression of you. I tell you one thing, when it comes to the whole message of the kingdom, it's about God empowering you until you have the right mindset until there's a paradigm shift, until you are living according to God's original plan and purpose, you are walking through this earth with authority, with dominion, you have healthy relationship, you live life with purpose, you have power over the flesh, power over the over sin, power over psychic energies, power over behaviors, power over a faulty belief systems, power over your negative emotions, power over iniquity in the heart, 
power over the inequities and in, in, in humanity. Know you not that you are powerful beyond belief. Power that God gives you will give you power over the strength of sin power over the enemy. In fact, when you walk and live in this realm of power, you will live with health. You will live with he, uh, deliverance. You live, will live with success. You will live with prosperity. You will have direction. You will have wisdom. You will live with integrity. You will maximize your potential. You will have liberty. You will never walk with economic depression. You will always have economic freedom. You will walk with character. You will have a refined personality. You will, you, you will be sensitive to the Holy Spirit. You'll have order and structure in your life. You will have stability in your life. And God will use you. He will use you as a gap filler because what the world needs is powerful leaders that have moral fabric, that have fortitude about themselves. What we need are powerful people who go to the educational system and you see educational reformation that in their, in their community, there's social reconstruction, there's community development. We need political enfranchisement. We need spiritual renewal. We need psychological liberation. And this happens when you have an eye-opening experience where, where you finally realize that you are not powerful Powerless, that you are powerful beyond belief. I believe that when we hear the message of the kingdom, which is a message of empowerment, you will have confidence building experience, capacity building experience, experiences, uh, character building experiences, cultural building experiences, and nation building experiences, all because we understand that we are living in this world, but we are not of this world and that we are not victims of circumstances, but God has given us power. He has given us high voltage power and we could start a revolution of love. We can start a revolution of peace and there be many that are listening to the sound of my voice where there's something in you that is coming alive, where you believe that you are here for a purpose. Yes, you are. And God is going to give you the power to walk that purpose out. We live in a kingdom, and the Bible said, for the kingdom of God is not in word, but it is in power, 1 Corinthians 4 and 20. This is a season where God is revealing to us how powerful we really are, and I prayed the prayer again that Paul prayed over the Ephesians church. I prayed over you that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ and the Father of glory will give Give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of the inheritance in his saints and uh, in his saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his power or mighty power and I decree that God is revealing to you that he's talking about you. In our text, we introduced the promise that Jesus gave to his disciple, and now he gives to us, I want you to tarry until you be endued with power from on high. Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, behold, I give you power to create wealth. Luke 10, 19 says, behold, I give you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt or harm you. You are powerful beyond belief. Power has to be acknowledged, it has to be understood, and it has to be activated. And in the messages to come, I want to give you the 36 dimensions of power. But right now, I want to pray over you that this is going to be a year where you are going to exercise the power that God has given you. And I pronounce this benediction upon you. Now unto him who is able to do the exceeding greatly above all you can ask or think according to the power that works in you. Amen. You've just heard me say that power is given in seed form. I believe that during this first installment, the seeds of power 
planted in you were activated. I believe that you will no longer walk in this life feeling powerless, but powerful. Thank you so much for watching. Don't allow these seeds to fall on deaf ear. Look over your notes, re-watch this teaching, and don't forget to follow us as we journey in this new series entitled Power From On High. I invite you to take action right now. Join us in reaching others by sharing this message and allowing these teachings to bless others just as I have hoped that it would bless you. Like, share, and subscribe. We invite you to partner with us and to give your first fruit, your tithe, your seed right now by visiting cindytrimministry.org or by downloading the Cindy Trim app in your Apple or Google Play Store. As usual, it's always an honor and a pleasure to do life with you in real time. God bless. Have you heard about the Cindy Trim Ministries app? This is where you can dive into our world of ministry. Just update or download the latest version of the app for free in the Apple or Google Play Store. On the dynamic home screen, you will continuously be up to date with the latest news, empowering teachings, and live streaming services. Become the leader you were born to be and establish your own empowered life group as you watch on-demand messages and access free discussion guides for each message. There's more empowerment at every click. Engage in the latest event hosted by Dr. Trim and find out when she's going to be in a city near you. Giving is easy. Donate now by selecting the Give button inside of the app. Download the Cindy Trim Ministries app now and begin your journey of empowerment with us today.